next on stage with me, I have Sasha and Kim. Kim is from LXSY Architekten, and talking about optimism, I would say they have quite some stories to tell. <laughs> they will show you what it takes and how to, basically, how the hell they constructed a circular house during a pandemic. So give them a round of applause. working yes hi everybody yes Leon's right this is a beautiful view <laughs> yeah Leon the optimist <laughs> uh, yeah also hi from my side um, actually I'm, I'm super super thrilled and excited to be here today on stage I can tell you why because um, Kim and also with our team and also like me Leon handed over this project the optimist uh, to the realists, let's say like that. Um, and so we had to do this job. Um, so the main core question is, um, why a sustainable building? Maybe to go a step back here. Um, for those, you might have the idea right now, we are in a sustainable building. Um, it's a fully, like really, really, um, let's say model, model project, because there's not many references that had been fulfilled before in this approach. Um, right behind me, for example, we have a lot of circular elements. These piles here, they used to be actually um, carrying the roof on top. We have a lot of natural material here as well. And this Most of the wood that you see around uh, is um, circular or reused. Also, yeah, a lot of the materials. We, we haven't finished calculating yet, but it's about 60, 60%. So. And so this used to be a former production site of the Kindle uh, brewery. This is why we still refer to it as the Kindle area. And this especially was a warehouse. So now we've remodeled that in a sustainable way. But the key question now, Kim, is why a sustainable building? Maybe you can explain uh, what a non-sustainable building or process <laughs> is. Because um, I'm not the expert. <laughs> so linear, linear planning. So classically, when architects start planning, this is, this is what it looks like. We start at phase one, get the basics going, and then we do some design, we do some detailing, then we go to site, and everything follows one step after the next. Circular construction instead looks like this in an ideal world. So if you look over here, so sourcing materials is always sort of the main, main thing, because how do you design something if you don't know what materials you're going to be using. So we started at the beginning and then we had like an open concept. Um, and my team, Sophia and Lena, who are sitting here, uh, we spent lots of time on this open concept and detailing and sourcing materials, prototyping, building, then the user moves in um, and you can take all of the, everything that's built in here can be built out. So it's not glued um, or nailed, it's screwed or, or clipped essentially. And then if we go to the next slide, this is what actually happened. <laughs> so, and still is happening. So there's a lot of back and forth open concept material sourcing. I remember a time uh, we were doing the transparent walls that you keep walking past. Damn it, we don't have enough glass. Where are we gonna get this material? And there's Lena, Sophia and I going to this a demol demolition site and going like, okay, we like those windows, we're gonna take that thing. And they're like, who are you and what are you doing on my, on my site? Like, well, we would like to reuse them. Why? Well, this is sort of the concept of our design. Okay, well, do whatever you want, but just you take your own stuff and you can have it. So that's what we did and uh, yeah, built it in here. And that's uh, where we're at now. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Uh, so what we tried to do is like we've pursued a few couple of principles. The first principle is actually reuse. So you would like to get as much material out of that existing building here beforehand. But as Kim just described, if we wouldn't have material, uh, we would go scout for other demolition sites. Um, but that also accounts for the interior construction, also for all of these wood elements in here. A lot is being reused from exhibitions, uh, from museums, and just temporary installations, for example. We, yeah, Leftovers we, from carpenters. Exactly, we did like a Friday tour, front, went to all the carpenters and took all their rubbish. 
they would ordinarily throw it away and we would sample, take about 80% of their trash wood and build it in here. <laughs> and so even then, it's super challenging, you know? You have to get 10 windows of the same time and also at that same um, amount, same quality, and it's almost impossible. It is possible, you can see it in here. All of these windows, for example, they are reused windows. Um, but sometimes you have to build from scratch. This is why, in that sense, we try to avoid actually the production of toxic waste which is the conventional way of doing so. This is why we use a lot of sustainable material, uh, like for example, hempcrete. So also while using recycled materials and new sustainable materials, um, how do we sort of make sure that we get the same quality as building with new materials? So we did a, a few prototyping workshops. So we actually tested. So all the walls that you see built here, we did a small test. That's the uh, Brandkontrolle, Andreas Flock, who is our excellent fire protection planner, who was uh, happy to take part and do some tests for us. Um, and this was a great pro pro uh, process, actually. So while you're planning something, to also prototype it at the same time, which gives you sort of the security that you're building something that does actually work. And we used a lot of wood. So if you uh, look at the next picture, and you've probably walked around here as well, um, well, uh, you can definitely see that. And wood is basically a super sustainable material because it binds more CO2, um, takes it out of the atmosphere, and therefore is really planet positive. Then, um, as Leon mentioned before, Corona also hit the scene. It also hit us. Um, suddenly, all the people were bored in this world and tried to consider, why don't I build something? I think it was China and America, they bought up all the wood and drove our prices skyrocketing. So you see the timeline of the price development of the uh, timber prices globally. And right yeah, around like spring last year, we had to order the wood. And look at the prices down there. <laughs> right at the top there. <laughs> Just another challenge to solve. <laughs> Luckily, we got all the materials, so the windows for free, so. <laughs> so. In the end, so we were tackling a lot of challenges. Nobody ever done like a circular construction project in this size before. I had no idea about it before, <laughs> like literally no idea. I just heard like circular construction, sounds cool, I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Very eager, and then realizing budget, yeah, it explodes with these material prices, the logistics, like, um, well, if people build a lot, then it's hard to get the material, not only that, material gets more expensive, it's even like almost impossible to find craft persons who can then actually build stuff. All right, in these cases, always project manager's nightmare, <laughs> delays in the construction process. And so there's been tons of meetings we had, and uh, they usually, we love to do check-ins at Impact Hub, yeah? and Kim and me, we were doing um, a lot of meetings throughout the week, at least, at least once a week, and so we always start like with... like to. Okay, let's start with the check-in, Kim. How are you feeling today? It was usually something between okay, medium, a little bit stressed, because I'm also an ultimate optimist like Leon. <laughs> For me, it's always... Well, I'm in a good mood because no bad news today. And then my statement would be, well, you haven't talked to me yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's shoot. What's happening, Kim? We have some delays because things are not being delivered right now. All right. <laughs> so either it's about the budget or delays. Well, let's face it. And seriously, like in the end, we had some serious delays. So we really had to move the opening, not only once, we had to do it not only twice or three times, no, it was in the end four times. So after one of these calls, or like all of these calls, it's just basically you hang up and you realize, oh my God, fuck. We have to inform not only 200 other persons, but it's a lot of financial pressure. And now um, I need to inform, first of all, the team, but I would wait at least 15 minutes. And in these 15 minutes, it was a, new circle opened up from screaming, sometimes crying, shouting, 
calming down myself, again to screaming, shouting, and then calling either Leon or Alex, our CFO. And uh, my team was always wondering, so how did, how did Sasha take it? I'm like, I think it's okay. I think he will be fine. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, mic dropped, right? <laughs> So Kim, why again? Why would we build a building and then even like sustainable? <laughs> well, so, yeah. if you look at the timelines here, I just don't. It's not about the content. It's just about like this is how a project looks like, and um, it's just about the complexity. So, if you, for example, have one of the every everything in here that you can see, even the windows, they are one of these lines here. Yeah? So, if the windows move a little bit behind, then um, it's just about that team that maybe uh, has a delay in the logistics or whatever, then you have to inform 15 other teams, hey, you can't start next week, but maybe the week after next week, and then again the circle. So imagine four like, major delays, you have to like, really get all these dependencies done. And this is, again, a nightmare. <laughs> That is true, but in comparison to other projects that we had running at the same time, which are maybe a little bit more, very, a lot more standard, um, there's a big difference on this side. Everybody that was working here, all the construction workers were far more of a team, it was a much better community vibe, and yes, even the delays, everybody felt the drama together. Nobody was trying to say, well, that guy didn't make it, so that's why I didn't. That's usually my, uh, on construction site, where who, who's, who's responsible for the rubbish and who's actually responsible for the problem. Always, somebody's always trying to shift blame. And on this site, it was quite different. It was more of a community um, construction effort and um, more of a team vibe. So I think that's one reason to build more sustainable. Let's see. <laughs> So, due to these delays, at some point we had to shut down the old Impact Hub, you know. All of our office tenants know that, all of our other members. Uh, at some point you need to terminate your contracts because apparently there's a new space opening up at some point. And so we had to shut down the Impact Hub Berlin, the old one at Friedrichstraße. It was a very sad moment for the full team, but a very stressful moment also for the space team because we had to organize a pop-up Impact Hub. Just another challenge on top. Um, because we had a community and we still wanted to offer service. Everybody was eager to work in, a, in the space, so... Yeah, this in turn led to a full, like, very, very, I have to admit, high amount of stress. I knew that before, uh, but at some point I am proud of at least one fact, despite of sometimes even working with my team in the... We had our construction office down here in the uh, basement. I achieved to never actually sleep at the space overnight, so I'm proud of that. Even if I would just go home for three or four hours, but I always, in the end, took a cab and then <laughs> did. However, to talk about the last one, um, in the final stage, just currently before the opening, we yes. hit the end gegner, as we refer to him. And this was the fourth, fourth wave of Corona. So, as you can see, like the big wave, uh, the big wall here, um, this was just three weeks before opening and it hit every one of us. First it started on the construction team, it started within our own team, planning team, and just... We, we, we've never been that stressed actually, that was definitely high bar there. <laughs> I almost freaked out. But we are here and I can now quickly refer to you why we actually took all these challenges upon us. There is some mere facts about the construction industry when you look at it on a global level. First of all, the global construction industry um, is actually responsible for 40% of all CO2 emissions worldwide. In comparison, the aviation sector is only 3%. And then 60% of the waste worldwide is produced by the construction industry again. Whereas only 1% of that material of demolished buildings is being reused and this was the intrinsic motivation to actually show to the world, prove that it's possible to do so. And it's super nice that we have this uh, amazing project to show people that great design and reused materials can can accomplish something like this and that this is how we should be building in the future. And 
Um, as I had two parallel projects, I don't think it's that much more complicated, but this is the ultimate optimist talking here, so please, let's all build circular and sustainable. And last but not least, it's actually fun to build buildings. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Honestly, happy he's still saying get that. get the output right away. <laughs> so, um, that's it, uh, I guess, um, especially I myself, I, it was blood, sweat and tears, but it was not only on me, it was on a lot of all our partners. I have to thank a lot of pe people here. Uh, first of all, our partners, let's say the Senate of Berlin, especially Bauaufsicht and Frau Stein, who made so many things possible here as well. <laughs> our partners in the construction transform, Heap 59, our fire protection and uh, angels and agents, yeah. Andreas Flock and Marit Buchert. Yeah, Elaro, Elektrotechnik, uh, Mandal Spezialsysteme, um, Collabo, uh, Studio Bali, Accidental Concrete, um, a lot of amazing people. And, is, and a, a special, special thank you to my team, Sophia and Lina and Margit. Where are you? Can you please stand up? Yes, please, please, please. <laughs> Like, in general, thanks to all the craft person who made this possible, to our partners from Nornom and Vilisto, to our partners from BUM who made the Impact Hub uh, pop-up actually possible. And to Studio, and, uh, Studio de Schütte, Sabine, thank you for the light design, amazing. To a series of mentors, it takes a little bit, but I have to do this right now. My mentors, Jennifer Rabal, Flo for Gasto support, David Hundenborg and Rolf Schulz for IT support, Björn Grindberg from Spielfeld for support, Impact Hub Zurich, especially Jorgo and uh, Alex as wife for hanging in there with us all the time. And the team. Special shout out, go out to, first of all, our project manager queen, Verena, sitting right there. Big applause for her, please. <laughs> to Felix, our experience manager, just on top, who will... <laughs> the full hosting team, Gesine, Juli, Tabea, Amira, and Serge for actually been thrown into a shark tank right when opening that space when nothing was ready. And of course, everyone else in the team. Thanks. And, and a special thanks to Max as well. For Not to forget Max. Max, our angel, angel, angel. Thank you to Sasha because I think without him we literally would not have managed this amazing project. Thank you very much.